Exodus chapter 4 verses 1 and verses 19. Exodus chapter 4 verses 1 and verse 19. This morning I'll be reading from the NLT uh, translation and you'll see uh, it on the screen. If you will, all over the church, if you stand not for me, but for the reverence of God's word, and this will be the last time I ask you to stand. Exodus chapter 4, verse 1 and verse 19. But Moses protested again. What if they won't believe me or listen to me? What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? Verse 19. Before Moses left Midian, the Lord said unto him, Return to Egypt. For all those who wanted to kill you have died. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, I just want to speak to you for a few moments, uh, a two-word topic. What if? What if? I, I recently said in our uh, praise rhetoric, and as I was exalting you to praise God today, I was telling you that nothing will be wasted. Because isn't that a big fear of ours? That you would have invested so much time and energy into things, into people, and then nothing is produced out of it. Yeah. I want to make sure that what I'm doing is going to matter. I want to make sure I'm in my calling. I want to make sure I found my purpose. And that is such a big topic that you can go on Amazon and just type in books on purpose. And it'll be book after book after book because we want to know, right? We want to know what our calling and purpose is because life is short. And the older you get, the more you realize how short life really is. When I was growing up and if somebody died and they were in their 40s and when people would say, oh, they were so young and I was 15, I was like, they weren't young. They was 45. Now, once I, I didn't hit them numbers, I'm like, when somebody died at 65, I said, oh, wow, they were so young. And if you 65 and somebody died at 80, you was like, oh, I can't believe they left here. They were so young because you realize you know, when you were a kid, you couldn't wait to get 16. And when you were 16, you couldn't wait to be 18. And all the child, all the you guys that wanted to drink legally, then you couldn't wait to become 21. And now you're adulting and you feel like now adulting is overrated. You almost wish you could crawl back into that bed that you grew up in where somebody tell you what time to get up and they just give you a short list of chores and you get to eat and you don't you hardly ever have to cook Ooh, wow it wasn't as bad as i as i thought it was right i want to know what my purpose is because time is going by and oftentimes our purpose is right in front of us and if what's in front of you is not your purpose what's in front of you is connected to your purpose and this is why I'm consistently telling you in this room to serve what's in front of you, whether it's your kids, whether it's the job that you do have. Maybe the job you have is not your career, but it's your assignment. Maybe it's not something you'll do forever. But if you keep sitting on the sideline waiting for your forever job, right, and not taking the one that's available to you, then you may miss the connection that's in the place of temporary. I mean, listen, Joseph had a prophecy about the palace. He had a prophecy. He had a prophetic dream about the palace. God showed him the palace, but God didn't show him the pit. God showed him his destiny, but God didn't show him prison. Right? But tell somebody, all of it is connected. No, no, no everybody said, all of it is connected. Now you need to say it, and you need to say it out of your mouth. And you need to hear yourself say it so Monday when things happen, you don't feel so punished by God. Some of us are rejecting the very thing that God wants to use to promote us. Mm. Yeah, we, we like to say, look at my trophies. But when Jesus gets up, he don't say, look at my trophies. He said, look, look at my scars. 
your scars qualify you. Do you want someone who just has the degree or you want someone who has the experience? This is why my godson Nicholas is here this summer. He has the degrees and he's finishing up his master's in Arizona. And he's going to have his degree in human resources, right? Right. But why is he here this summer? He's doing something called intern. Because having a resume with just the degrees is not that attractive. It doesn't make him believable if he has the information, but he's never had intimacy with the subject. And some of you are feeling rejected by God when he's given you intimacy with the purpose that he has called you for. Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. That's one way. But also I got to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. Tell your neighbor, you got to know both sides. You're not believable if you ain't never walked through it. You can't convince me if the product doesn't work for you. And so sometimes God will take you. Oh, what is my purpose? 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 Now look at the person beside you and ask them, what is your pain? No, no. What was your conflict? What did you struggle with? What do you still struggle with? Because some kind of way in that struggle, you'll find your purpose. And many of us, by now, you should know. You may can't, you may not have the total language or the vernacular for it like some people. I'm an apostolic administrator. I'm an end time prophetic voice. You may not, you may not have all the language for it. Sometimes you may not know what you're called to do, but you know who you're called to. I don't know what, what is your calling? What is your purpose? Well, I don't know what the title is, but because of my childhood, I'm called to young girls. I mean, I love the older women, but I, but I come alive when I start talking to young girls. Why? Because I was a young girl that needed talking to. You know, I, I, what, what's your purpose? I, I don't, uh, you know, I don't know what to label it. I don't know if I'm a, you know, uh, if I'm called to counseling. I don't know if I'm a counselor. I don't know if I'm a rehab director, but all I know is I dealt with addiction for years. So I kind of know how addiction works. I grew up in a house full of people who were addicted. I had my own seasons of addiction. Where, and there were moments where I broke it, but then I fell off the wagon 10 times, but I got back on it again. And so uh, you all can preach to them and preaching is good but because I know the pattern because I know the journey I can identify it and I have the language to speak to someone who's struggling with addiction by now you should know as I'm preaching you should be unpacking oh wow what I thought was punishment was really purpose because God could have picked me up at any time and dropped me off in a different place but instead of dropping me into a place of prominence he dropped me in a place of process and if he put me through this process evidently my purpose is attached to it omnipotent God that's all powerful that can do whatever he wants to do whenever he gets ready I pray that God would bring me out of it more than once I pray that God would open up another door another another job another neighborhood another city a thousand times before and the God that I know I know he heard me and if he heard me and his answer was no or not yet I got a revelation now if God did not change it that's because there's purpose in it oh my God I wish somebody I hope y'all hearing what I'm saying I need you to look at somebody tell them if God did not change it tell them there's purpose in it I had 50 of you all to say it and I need the rest of the 300 of you to join me look at somebody and tell him if God did not change it tell him it's because his purpose in it and you've been wanting to know your purpose you've been wanting to know your purpose and here it is what is your pain what you've been getting out of your process and so our challenge now becomes after we discover what the purpose is 
Will we do it? Because sometimes if your purpose has processed you, now ministering from that place can be triggering. If you've gone through marital issues and God graced y'all to get through it, now some of us, instead of embracing other married couples that's going through marital problems, you say, uh-uh, because it's triggering. Now I don't want to deal with people in their addictions because it's triggering from my childhood. I need you to lay hands on your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you need to heal so you can serve you can because if you if you if you stay in the place where God only heals me enough for me to survive but not heal me enough to serve then it's wasted it's wasted hear, hear me what I'm saying God wants to heal you in such a way so you can help somebody else navigate don't you realize I'm trying to tell you he could have changed it and brought you out of it quicker but the reason why he took you through it slower than anybody else is so you would know the path you can't lead somebody if you ain't never went through it if you went through it too quick you went through it so quick you didn't see no landmarks you went through it so quick you didn't read the signs but when you have gone through it more than once you can tell somebody with your eyes closed where you are it'll be the only way it'll be wasted if God frees you and you keep it to yourself that's why that's why I do believe y'all want to put Harriet Tubman on a $10 bill. She need to be, y'all need to make a $1,000 bill and put her on it. She's done, any, she's done more than any the other founded fathers would have done for anybody. Because if I would have got the freedom, I'm just going to be honest with y'all. If I got the freedom, I don't know. If I would have came, I love my family. I don't know if I would have came back for them. I might have said, okay, I'm going to intercede from you from the north. But why should she be honored? Because after she got to freedom, instead of sitting in her freedom, she says, I'm going to put my freedom at jeopardy to go back into something that God delivered me from not to go back in it but to rescue somebody else from it and she did it more than once wounded and was doing it having seizures and doing it I need you to look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor I don't care how messed up you think you are tell them you still got something to give I don't care how tired you are I don't care how, I don't care how many issues you think you still have you are still doing better than somebody else hallelujah you better walk out your purpose because you're not living if you're not walking out your purpose now the question is it's not what is my purpose is if am I willing to do it and this is the text today Moses you got to go back to Egypt Moses you got to go back to Egypt and he said I can't do it I can't do it I can't talk and then he says I got Aaron for you your brother talk for you I mean but I ain't got no power all of Egypt God said took a rod he take your rod throw it down it became a snake a snake God was showing him, I got power over Satan. <laughs> he said, put your hand, put your hand in your, in, in, in your cloak. He put his hand in there, take it out. Moses said, ah! His hand turned to leprosy. He said, put it back in. He took it out. He said, oh, wow. Why you do that? He said, I want you to know, I got power over your flesh. He said, pour that water out. Water turned to blood. Ah! What is it? He's got, I want you to know I got power over the resources. I got power over the elements. I got power over the wind. I got power over the air. I got power over the water. He says, I'm going to give you Aaron for your weakness to show you I got strength for what you think is a weakness. Look at your neighbor, tell your neighbor, God is addressing all of your excuses. 
I'm close to, I'm close to all my aunts in, in, in different ways. And when I'm with one of them, I always tell them they're my favorite because they are. You know, Aunt Geneva's the first one I ever told that God was calling me to preach. She always has a way to minister to me in such a way in her stillness and quietness and in the in surety. Um, my Aunt Joyce is always just practical, practical, and always making me be careful and looking out for everything. I have, Aunt Peg is a second mother to me. Aunt Hattie, oh my goodness, she just love. I just love Aunt Hattie. Every aunt, I just got a special relationship with. And so I got that Aunt Margie, which is the youngest aunt. We talk all the time, and one moment she's coaching me, the next minute I'm coaching her. Well, my Aunt Margie was working uh, a, a minimal job. You know, she has a good husband. Uh, she was working, and, and she told me one day, she said, a woman from the bank came in and told me, says, Margie, why don't you apply for the job at the bank? Oh, Margie said, oh, no. You know, I'm older now, learning new things. I can't do that. And then she told me about it. I said, Aunt Margie, but you told me you're waiting for God to open up another door for you. She said, yeah, but um, I don't think I can do that job. And the woman kept coming by her job and saying, why don't you apply for the job? Aunt Margie would still tell me. She said, because Aunt Margie had something else in mind she wanted to do. She was praying for a door, but she had in her mind what kind of door. See, some of you going to miss it. You better start getting to a place and say, Lord, however you want to do it. However you want to bless me. Because some of the times I chose for myself and when I got what I chose, I didn't want it. Anybody ever been up late and ordered something on Amazon and then when it came in, you said, man what is this and so she says well I don't even know if I can get the job I says the woman that told you about the job is a woman that has influence to get you the job I don't know I don't know but maybe I'll apply then she applied and then when she applied what happened not at first no response See, this is what some of you are. The reason why you won't walk out your purpose because you are afraid of rejection. So I would rather not try than to try and get rejected. At least the job I got, it's a sure job. At least the position I'm in, I know this position. At least the house I live in, I can afford this. At least where I'm at, I can wrap my mind around this. And I'm afraid of stepping out into the unknown. And it went quiet. So I didn't built her up. Come on, we're going to believe God. And then it went quiet. She said, well, evidently, because I know some other people applied. And then what happened out of nowhere? They called her for an interview. God had to move some people around. Tell your neighbor, he's working behind the scenes. Play that right. I'm going to say it one more time and I want you to play, you know, go down. Hold on. Look at your neighbor and say, he's working behind the scenes. Yes, sir. I like that. Tell somebody else, he's working behind the scenes. You thought it was rejection and he was preparing the platform. She got, she got the job. Hear me. It's like John chapter 5. When Jesus came and saw a man at the pool. And he had been lame there for 38 years. And Jesus asked him, says, do you want to be, do you want to be whole? He said, I ain't got nobody to help me. That is not what I ask you. Do you want to be made? I don't have the money for it. I didn't ask you that. Do you want it? And that's what happens. As soon as we are dressed with what God is calling for us to do, we start making excuses. And then the Lord spoke to him. Hey, sorry. The Lord spoke to him and said, get up. All right. All my note takers, write this down. The moment God spoke to you, 
you automatically had the ability. The, your miracle is in the instructions. The mere fact that God told him to get up. The moment the command came, the ability was released. Because when the Lord says get up, the Bible says he immediately got strength and got up. I said that to say this. The mere fact God wants you to do it means you can do it. The mere fact that God put it in your spirit to do it. That means the time he spoke it out of his mouth, you now have the strength to do it. And this is why I want to encourage somebody who's walking in fear and condemnation, even when it comes to your salvation. You are holy. All believers in here who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, I want you to shout, I am holy. Because until you start confessing it and start believing that, you won't live it. Now, I can give you a whole list of things to do so you'll look it. But we got a whole lot of people looking it. But the Bible said they're walking sepulchers. They look good on the outside, but on the inside, they're full of dead men's bones. Yes, cemeteries are pretty. Nice headstones, nice flowers. But if you dig under the surface, stuff is rotting and things are dying. I want God to work on my inside. I want him to get the jealousy out of me. I want him to get the gook. I want him to get the fear. I want him to get the malice. I want him to get the lust out of me. I want him to get the wicked imagine. I want to be holy for real. I don't want to just look holy. I want to be holy. I want to be real for God. And I know I can be because he said it. He didn't tell me to do holy. He told me to be holy. Because the moment I start being, I'll start producing. You can't expect an apple tree to produce plums. It must first be an apple tree in order to produce apples. Hey, God. Hallelujah. And I know there ain't no scripture to Oh, well, maybe there's a scripture to it. Wow. You know what my grandmother used to say? She said, if you want your plants to grow. Oh, now y'all gonna think this is crazy. Okay, let me get away from this. Okay, since you begged me. My grandmother said, if you want your plants to grow, talk to them. <laughs> Some kind of way my grandmother believed, my grandmother believed that the atmosphere mattered even for the plants. And evidently, plants got ears. Because even when Jesus found a plant that had leaves and no fruit, he cursed it. Even nature responds to the voice of God. So if the stars were made to worship, if all of that in the atmosphere responds to the voice of God, that means once God speaks to me about something, once God puts it in my mind, he calls me to preach. He calls me to lead worship. He calls me to be a foster parent. He calls me to start my own company. He calls me to marriage. And while I'm going in my head about my inability and my lack of good reference points, I can do it. How do I know I can do it? Not because I've done it before. I can do it because he called me. God's vote of confidence should be enough. God's vote of should be enough put verse 19 on the screen and I'll close out he said I can't talk Aaron I got issues with my flesh put your hand in look I don't have the power throw down a rod I got power over Satan as I close this message about all of Moses is what ifs, what ifs, what ifs. I want to challenge you, Elder Francine. It had nothing to do with his stuttering. It wasn't about the stuttering, Isaac. I mean, God, that's a good excuse. But why not go back? It wasn't about the stuttering. 
It wasn't the rod. It wasn't. God did all that to eliminate all excuses. But after God proved him, addressed him, the question is, well, what is it really about? What is it? Why will you not, after you've seen the power of God in your life, why you will not surrender to do what he's called you to do? Why? Why? What is it really about? Because a lot of times we're making excuses, but those excuses are not the real reasons. I'm going to tell you what it was about. Because the Bible says once he convinced Moses to go, Moses is still packing and trembling. Come on. I'm saying yes, Lord. And on the inside, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Lord tell you to join the ramp oh God here I go I don't know how I'm going to do this <laughs> the Lord told me to move to Lynchburg oh God I don't know how I'm doing it but I'm like and then the Lord says and hey Moses 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 yes what is it you're going back and uh, those who know what you did in the past those that want to kill you they already dead. It wasn't about his stuttering. He was afraid of his past. And that's what's between some of us and fulfilling our assignment. Yeah, we're weak, but we've seen God's power use people. But I'm afraid of the past. I'm afraid of the potential of me going back to the past. I am afraid of my past coming back. I'm afraid of my past haunting me in my present and damaging me in my future. So let me hide out in the plains of Midian where nobody knows my name. I'm afraid of it. I'm afraid of it. And I'll just be honest with you. When people keep calling me, oh, Bishop Young is so nice. I just can't believe how nice he is. He's so humble. Well, first of all, I'm from Gratna and I know that. And I got a family that reminds me of where I'm from. But then can I tell you something? I may not be as humble as people think I am. It's really, I'm just more scared. Because if I sit out among you, I can hide. But to come stand right here? Do you know how many times I change clothes today? on a nice suit and Pastor Marvin I looked oh wow he got a nice suit on I got a nice suit then I go in the mirror I got a big stain that nobody knows where it came from so I throw this long garment on throw this long garment on and if you if anybody know what I mean when I say this it's a gamble when it's time to put on clothes because it last time I laid my clothes. It's not even enough to lay your clothes out at night. You got to try them on at night. Amen. So I didn't put this garment on. And then I'm in worship and the buttons just keep falling. My, my, my sneakers, the strings, I've never been able to tie my shoes. My mom has always told me that. My shoe strings keep coming loose. And, and why did I say I was going to keep the suit on? Even though it had a stain and Pastor Marvin looked at me and said, well, you know how people are now. It'll be all over social media tonight. Like, what was the stain on his clothes? Why? Because the more public you are, the easier target you become. And we are afraid. We are afraid of the past. We are afraid. Why? Why Moses really don't want to go back? Because the last time he was there, he killed somebody and he covered it up. And the reason why is some of us are fearful in walking out our assignment is because people like us for the present us. They like us for the person that we came after the, became after the process. But tell your neighbor, I haven't always been here. Come on, y'all, get free. Get free. 
I haven't always been here. I need y'all to come on, be honest with somebody. Tell them, I've done some stuff in my past I don't want to talk about. I have done some things in my past that I hope never comes back up. I have done some things in my past that you like to church me. You're so anointed. Why don't you preach? And you're just preaching to everybody at work and you're like, oh, no, 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 no. Because people know the process to you. They don't know the you before that. They don't know the broken place. I was, a pastor was telling me, called me the other day, and he said something negative about women serving in church and getting pregnant out of wedlock. And he said, he just talked about how such a shame it is. I just told him, I said, well, you know, all sin is shame, you know. You know, I said, all have sinned and come short of the glory. All unrighteousness is sin, but he just kept driving home. And I said, and he said, and then the pastors are dedicating the babies. And I said, well, the babies should be dedicated, right? <laughs> and then I found said, I said, hey, 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 hey. I said, my mama was in church and she had me before she got married. Now she don't celebrate it. We don't celebrate the sin. But I'm glad she stayed instead of leaving. I just want to encourage somebody, if you fall, fall in the church. I'd rather you fall in the street church than fall in the street because if you fall at least fall in the hospital because you have a better chance of recovering if you struggle struggle with the saints come on push your neighbor tell your neighbor you don't have to hide from your help come on you don't have to hide just because you got stuff going on in your life don't run from help because that's why because somebody need to hear it. And that's why when a young lady comes speak to me, and she says, I don't know how to tell you this. I don't know how to tell you this. I don't know. How, and I'm looking. You know, by this time, the Lord started revealing. I said, and you, I, I want to free them up. Like, you pregnant. And then I'm like, you need to go sit down. And, you need to go sit down and talk to mother. Y'all. Please don't make me go talk to her. I said, no, you need to go talk to her. Because when you said mother younger, he says, oh gosh, here come condemnation. But the voice of the Lord says, Moses, I'm sorry. I, have to like, I know somebody going to cut that shake up, but I don't care. Moses, those who seek to kill you are dead. Woman, where are your accusers? what if what if what if it comes back up I'll come to tell somebody even if it comes back up it ain't gonna have no power once you have repented of something as far as the east y'all ought to really be praising God off of this y'all really no no y'all really should be giving God the glory off of this as far as the east is from the west he says I will take your sins and throw them in the sea of forgetfulness and remember them no more I'm going to give you five seconds to praise God not for the house not for the car praise him for forgiveness that's kind of a weak praise for forgiveness you ought to shout louder than you would if he was giving you a million dollars shout for forgiveness though your sins be as scarlet I'll wash you whiter than snow everyone stand it's possible everyone stand everyone stand it's very possible to be forgiven and still be bound by, by guilt and shame You can be forgiven just like the prodigal son and then you come in the house and you're like, I'll just be a slave. He's like, no, 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 that's not forgiveness. That's not the forgiveness I have. 
That's how the world would do you. I'm so glad you came back. I want to restore back unto you everything you lost. I want to. Oh, Mary, don't you weep. Oh, Martha, don't you moan. Why? Pharaoh's army got drowned in the Red Sea. So Jackie, what he's saying, when Moses finally went and got them out of Egypt, this is my last point. <laughs> my God. I think it is too. I'm going to go back and listen to this. <laughs> when Moses finally got them out, like God said, it was a, it was a process. And, and the rod and all that stuff was necessary but the rod and all that stuff was really for Egypt the word about the past was for Moses <laughs> when they came out like God said and they got a, and they got at that Red Sea is how we gonna get across here Moses held up the rod God opened up the Red Sea how did he open up the Red Sea? He sent the wind. And they walked across on what? It won't even muddy. That, that was a strong wind. Not only to move the water, but to dry the ground. They walked across on dry ground. I'm ready for this artist. Listen. And then when Pharaoh's army got ready, to come behind them, God sent a second wind. And what did the second wind do? The first wind was for you. But the second wind is for your past. I want you to lift up your hands everybody that could use it and with the fruit of your lips I want you to praise God for the second wind let God bury Moses <laughs> give him the body give him the bones of the past and when I say live like it never happened I'm not saying live without the gratefulness I'm not saying live without the lesson. I'm saying live without the condemnation and shame. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me out of all the things that I've experienced in life. Nothing compares to accepting Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. If you are not saved and you have not experienced the saving power of Jesus Christ right where you are, ask him. Ask him to save you and he'll meet you at the point of your need. If you need to connect with someone or someone to pray with you, send your prayer request or call the number on the screen and we will be there to share Jesus Christ and the message of hope with you. I want to thank all of you who have been supporting our ministry down through the years. It's because of you that we've expanded this YouTube channel. We've expanded all on the outlets that you're hearing of this message. So what I want you to do is make sure you share, make sure you subscribe and send this message to someone who needs to hear it. And for all of you who desire to support our ministry, there are ways to give on the screen. And remember, when you sow into our ministry, you're not just helping us do ministry domestically, but you're partnering with what we're doing all over the world. The seed may leave your hand, but it will never leave your life. This is Bishop S.Y. Younger saying, go with God because he's already going with you. God bless you.